Welcome to our lecture online. Next, we're going to look at area expansion. Of course, expansion due to thermal expansion. Thermal increase of heat causes of atoms and molecules to vibrate more. Everything expands. So now we're going to look at the expansion in an area rather than just a length. So let's say that this was our original area. We heat up that plate. Let's say it's a plate, a thin plate. Then it's going to expand in all directions. Of course, we're only going to look at the expansion in one direction here makes it easier to do the mathematics. And so let's say that each length increases by a small amount of delta L in this direction and delta L in that direction. So the new length, or, or the new area, I should say, A final, is going to be equal to the product of the two sides, of course. So it's going to be equal to L sub naught plus delta L quantity squared. If we now go ahead and square that quantity, it's a binomial. So this is the first term squared plus twice the product of the two, 2 L sub naught delta L, times the last term squared, so plus uh, delta L squared. Now, delta L squared is going to be a very small quantity. That's this little thing right here at the very edge. So this is a delta L squared. Uh, notice the L sub naught times delta L. Those are the two long uh, stretches right here. And of course, your A sub naught is simply your L sub naught squared right there. Now, turns out that the delta L is so small, we can probably just ignore it. So we're just going to assume that this is approximately equal to zero. And so we can just ignore it, which means that the final area is simply going to be equal to L sub naught squared plus 2 L sub naught delta L. <clears throat> now, this L sub naught squared, of course, that's the original area. So we can say that A final is equal to the original area plus 2 L sub naught delta L. Now, next, what we need to do is look at this delta L right here. So what is delta L equal to? If we go back to our linear expansion due to the increase in heat, we can then say that delta L is equal to the original L times the coefficient of linear expansion times the change in the temperature. If you now go ahead and take this and replace delta L by that, we now get A final is equal to the original area plus two times the original length times the original length times alpha times delta t. Now here we have L sub naught times L sub naught, which is L sub naught squared. And just like what we had before here, we can replace this by the original area right here. So we have A final is equal to the original area plus two times the original area times the coefficient of linear expansion times delta t. If we now um, take out or factor, that's the word I was looking for, uh, if we factor out the a sub naught, we are left with a 1 plus 2 alpha delta t. Now let's compare that to what we had when we did the linear expansion. If we take this and we use it to write L final is equal to L initial times 1 plus alpha delta t. That's the equation we got when we calculated the linear exp uh, thermal expansion. Then we can see the difference here is that, of course, instead of L sub naught, we have A sub naught. And instead of alpha, we have 2 alpha, which means that the area expansion coefficient is really twice the linear coefficient, uh, expansion coefficient. So now we realize that we can go ahead and work out any problem to find the final area after it's been heated up and it expands an area. We simply realize then to find the coefficient of area expansion, we simply double the coefficient of linear expansion. So let's go ahead and do another video so we can show you some examples of how we would apply that. So this can now be considered to be the coefficient of area expansion. Okay, so that makes it straightforward. And we'll go ahead and show you some examples of how to utilize that.